The next word is ara, arai. And this is also a noun of the first declension. It's an alter. Now, this is not the verb alter, which is spelled with an E. This is the noun, a place where something is sacrificed or burned. And that explains so many of the derivatives that we get, like ash, arson, arid, azalea, a flower, in other words, that has fiery colors. And these people are crowded around an altar at a temple. You can see something is being burned there. Okay. And Ara is also the name of a constellation, which is not visible to us here. It's in the southern hemisphere. Next, we have lingua, linguae, a noun of the first declension again, and it means tongue or language, and we get words like language and linguist, okay, linguistic, lingual, there are lots of words that uh, are derived from lingua. Next, we have umbra, umbrae, another noun of the first declension, and this means shadow or ghost or shade. And we get lots of words from this. The easy one at the bottom is umbrella, because when you hold it up, it gives you shade. Although an umbrella for sunlight is called the parasol these days. But we also get words like adumbrate to foreshadow and inumbrate to put something into shadow. Next we have inopia, inopiae. Again, more nouns here from the first declension. And this means a lack or a need. Now remember, this is the noun for need, not the verb. Next we have dominus domini. It's a masculine noun of the second declension because we can see that long I at the end of domini. And it's a master of a house, a master of slaves, a master of a nation. And we get words like dominate and dominion, among many others. Next, we have a word we've seen before, populus populi, a masculine noun of the second declension. And it just means a nation or a people. And it's where we get words like population, people, popular, populous. OK, it's a very useful word. Your next word is socius, soki, another masculine noun of the second declension, and it means ally or comrade, and we get words like society and association from this. Next, we have a very familiar word, magister, magistri. Okay, another masculine noun. This is also second declension. And it means master of a school, of a ship. It's also teacher. And we get words like mister and master, magisterial, magistrate. And this is one of those second declension masculine nouns where the E disappears, like in ager, agri and conquer, concre.
The next word is frumentum, frumenti. This is a neuter noun of the second declension because of the um. And it just means grain. Next, we have locus loci, noun. This is a second declension noun. It's masculine, sort of. I'm going to explain why in a moment. And it means place. And what's weird about this is it starts off masculine. Locus loci, usi o um o. No problem there. But then it changes gender and it becomes a neuter noun in the plural. It goes from masculine to neuter. There are some nouns that do this. Now let's take a look at some adjectives very quickly. We have parwus, parwa, parwum. It's an adjective. We call it a three termination adjective because it has a masculine ending, a feminine, and a neuter one. And it means little or small. You may encounter the word parvule someday. It just means a little pill. One more adjective today, we have saker, sacra, sacrum. It's an adjective, also three termination, because it has three different endings, one for each gender. And it means sacred or holy, or interestingly, also accursed. And we get words like sacred and sacrament from this. And let's take a look at a few verbs. This is one that we've practiced with before, possibly. This is do, dare, dedi, datum. You have all four principal parts. The third principal part is yellow because it's dedi and not dewi. There should be a V there instead of the second D, but this one's a rule breaker. Okay, so it's a verb, first conjugation, and it means I give and dare means to give. And we get donor, donation, and all of those words that we saw with donum, gift. Next, we have sto, stare, steti, statum. And again, the 3PP is irregular. Instead of stewi, it's steti. And this is a verb of the first conjugation. Sto is I stand. Stare is to stand. And we get so many words. Stop, stand, still, station, status, which is basically your standing. Um, if somebody asks what your credit status is, they want to know what your credit standing is. Statue and lots more. Next, we have nuntio, nuntiare, nuntiawi, nuntiatum. Again, all four principal parts are present here. This is another verb, and it's just I announce or I report. And you'll remember that uh, earlier in the year we had nuntius, okay, the news or the messenger. Next, we have one we've definitely seen before, pugno, pugnare, pugnawi, pugnatum, which we know is a verb that means I fight, and we get words like pugnacious, pugnatory, repune, and appune, and other words.
Let's look at some adverbs. This is one that we've already seen before. This is du. It's an adverb that means for a long time. And in the book, we saw du pugnabant. For a long time, they were fighting. Next, we have hedi. This is not a word that we've seen before. It's another adverb that means yesterday. Next, we have kras. This we've seen before. Another adverb that means tomorrow. And it's where we get the word procrastinate putting off until tomorrow. Next we have modo, which could be confused with other words. Modo means only, just, or just now. This one we've seen before, this is hodie, an adverb which means today. And you probably recognize this and cross from hodie mihi cross tibi. Today it is me, tomorrow it will be you. Here's another one that we've seen before. This is ibi, which means that, there, or in that place, like ubi amor, ibi dolor. Where there is love, there is pain. All right, everyone, you can now complete the GIM kit activity. The link uh, is posted in Schoology, and if it isn't, it will be very soon. And again, if you didn't get all the notes, you could certainly rewind and watch this again, or just use your book. That's it for today. Walete.